Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the external jugular vein. First of all, we should go through the formation of the external jugular vein, how the external jugular vein is formed, and where it is formed. The external jugular vein is formed near the angle of the mandible here, near the angle of the mandible by the union of the posterior auricular vein and the posterior division of the retromandibular vein. Okay, so we'll get, this is the posterior auricular vein, this is the posterior division of the retromandibular vein here, and here is the formation of the, of the external jugular vein. So again, try, this is the posterior auricular vein, this is the external jugular vein, this is the retromandibular vein, this is the retromandibular vein that is formed by the union of the maxillary vein and the superficial temporal vein. Location, it lies deep to the latissima in the superficial fascia in most of its part. Okay, tributaries, posterior, posterior external jugular vein, transverse cervical vein, Suprascapular vein, we we'll get here suprascapular vein here, and this is the transverse cervical vein, and anterior jugular vein. This is the anterior jugular vein. Okay, so we got a few tributaries of the external jugular vein. So what is the course of the external jugular vein? External jugular vein begins within the lower part of the parotid gland. Here is the location of the parotid gland is located here. And it is formed here in the lower part of the parotid gland, crosses the sternocleidomastoid muscle obliquely. It is crossing, this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle sternum clavicle mastoid. So this is the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle. This is crossed by the external jugular vein obliquely. It pierces the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia at the inter inferior angle of the roof of the posterior triangle. This is the posterior triangle. This is the inter inferior angle. So it pierces the the investing layer of deep cervical fascia behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle you can say just along the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle at the entire inferior angle of the roof of the posterior triangle and opens into the subclavian vein this vein the external jugular vein opens into the subclavian vein that has not been shown here as it pierces the fascia the margins of the vein get adherent to the fascia. There is a problem. So it may not be closed in, it, in case of injury to the external jugular vein. So it may not close because the, the edges of the, of the external jugular vein is connected to the fascia. So that what happened, there may be chance of air embolism. Okay. It drains most of the scalp and side of the face. Okay, so it is external jugular vein. It will pick up venous blood from the skull on the face. Okay, so internal jugular vein mostly pick up venous blood from the brain and deep structures of the head and neck. Clinical anatomy. The external jugular vein acts as an internal barometer, according to Keith Moore. Normally, it is distinct just above the clavicle. You can see it just above the clavicle, but it may, becomes very prominent, prominent in heart failure, superior vena cable obstruction. We can also say it will be prominent in case of cardiac tamponade. When there is excessive collection of fluid inside the pericardial cavity, 
enlarged supraclavicular lymph node may be due to some type of lymph some type of cancer spread there increase interthoracic pressure okay so these are the condition the external jugular vein will be prominent it can be prominent by valsalva maneuver if you close the mouth and nose and attempt to breathe out then it will be prominent the external jugular vein this is very important severance of the external jugular vein this is external jugular vein may lead to hemorrhage certainly it is a blood vessel if it is open then certainly there will be hemorrhage venous embolism specifically ar embolism that may be very much severe condition that may lead to dyspnea and death okay embolism ar embolism in the venous system that may block the the superior vena cava it may block the right atrium totally that may lead to death we will now draw the surface anatomy we need two points the vein is visible through the skin and is made prominent by blowing with mouth and nostril close that is the valsalva maneuver if you close the nose and mouth if you attempt to breathe out then external jugular vein will be very prominent so external jugular vein can be outlined by joining following two points what are those two points okay a point below the angle of the mandible number one number two a point on the upper border of the clavicle immediately lateral to the posterior border of the sternocleidal mastoid muscle okay let's go to the next slide and we'll we'll make the make the surface anatomy so this is the angle of the mandible so we can put a point there okay here is a point at the angle of the mandible here is our point here another point on the clavicle just behind the posterior border of the border of the sternum to the mastoid muscle so another point is here so if you draw these two point then we'll get the external jugular vein okay we got the external jugular vein if we draw these two point so this is the external jugular vein it is crossing over the sternum to the mastoid muscle it is underneath the platysma okay so it pierces the investing layer of deep cervical fascia ultimately it opens into the subclavian vein okay we got that and it is clinically important we can assess the the heart condition especially right side of the heart heart failure in interthoracic pressure by looking at the the external jugular vein it may go up to this level normally may be prominent but in case of obstruction the entire vein will be prominent okay and that's all about the anatomy of the external jugular vein if you like my video please support my channel please share the information with your friends if you have any question please feel free to ask me please support my channel and please subscribe me and have a nice day bye now